When I was starting out learning about FPGAs, I couldn't find any resource which showed the development of a full project from start to finish with kind of like a running commentary, you know, what mistakes were being made and what's the best approach to take when you want to push forward a, you know, a big project. Uh, now, I'm by no means an expert in FPGA design, but I have built several major designs relating to various aspects of my research. So I can normally find a way to get these things uh, done. So I thought it would be fun to dedicate several videos, really, to the development of something substantial within an FPGA. So, you know, start to finish in real time, we'll discuss what's going on, my thoughts based on experience, you know, building up this kind of project. So hopefully those of you with less experience can benefit and build your own confidence when you need to do something similar. Now, the one I'm going to go for is an FPGA based spectrum analyzer centered on the use of the Intel FFT mega function. I have a number of design requirements here which will make things quite interesting. Firstly, I would like this to be controllable from a graphical user interface. So something like MATLAB, you know, to send commands to the FPGA and receive the data um, from the FFT result so it can be displayed in something approximating real time. So it looks like a normal spectrum analyzer. Secondly, I would like the number of FFT points to be uh, configurable in real time. So if the user wants, let's say 8,096 points, they can select it from the MATLAB graphical user interface. They can press a button on the screen maybe, um, and then it will update on the fly within the FPGA. Thirdly, I want to implement uh, the previous two points, so I'll have to incorporate an embedded processor on the FPGA. Uh, now, this is not to do the FFT, okay? It's much better to do the FFT in hardware on an FPGA, uh, but this really is to do the processing of the messages to and from the MATLAB graphical user interface. I'll probably be, probably be using something like uh, UART, simply because it's easy to use and I've got experience with it. Uh, but there might be some limitations on how fast we can get all of those FFT results from the FPGA into MATLAB and display them because UART is you know, relatively slow. So this is quite a significant challenge. Okay, there are some substantial challenges to overcome here, ranging from how we will actually achieve on the fly uh, configurability on the FFT, how we'll write the code to interface with the embedded processor, you know, to send and receive the commands um, and also act on them within the FPGA. So there's some Verilog code uh, to write there. Uh, we've got some code to write for the A to D converter interface. We'll write that in, in Verilog. And of course, we'll have to turn our attention to MATLAB and design and build the graphical user interface to fit nicely around the FPGA stuff. So this is quite ambitious, and I think it will take maybe five, six or seven videos to complete this project. But I'll make sure that I provide a comprehensive commentary of my thought process and not edit out some of the things that go wrong, because that's actually where you learn the most. And I think the points I'll try to make is, you know, it can be intimidating when you have to build something, you know, a, a major design like this. So I'll show you how you can achieve this by doing it step by step. The truth is you can't build something like this in one go. This is the mistake I see many students try to make when they have something complex to build. They try to do everything in one go, press compile and expect it to work. Well, life doesn't, doesn't work like that, okay? You have to build it step by step and you have to push forward incrementally and you have to build an ecosystem around what you're building to make sure everything goes smoothly and you know later on down the road if something goes wrong you have to have the ability to backtrack and correct it without costing you much time so i'll show you my approach for doing this and just to finish the hardware that i'll be using is the cyclone 5 starter kit um, and the thdb ADA daughterboard uh, made by Terasic, and that has a 
65 mega sample per second A to D converter. Um, and of course, we'll also be using a UART interface to MATLAB. So I hope this is of interest to you. That there'll be you know a series of videos coming up. The first one, I think I'll be focusing on the implementation of the FFT because that's central to the whole project. And then we'll start building everything else around that. But this is quite ambitious. Um, and I hope uh, you'll enjoy the process and learn something from it. Thank you.